Today on Law Weekly, we talk about the National Prosecution Coordination Committee of the Federal Government, the committee which was inaugurated by the Federal Government on the 27th of May 2016, is saddled with the responsibility of ensuring the effective prosecution of high-profile criminal cases in the country. The Vice President at the inauguration had said that selection of the members of the committee took into consideration not only legal skills and learning, but also integrity and strength of character to chart a new cause for the nation's criminal justice system. The Attorney General of the Federation, who is the chairman of the committee, last week directed the prosecution agencies in the country to compile and send to him a list of all pending criminal cases across the country. The cases will be classified and the high-profile ones will be taken over by the National Prosecution Coordination Committee. The AGF has also explained that for a case to be tagged high-profile, it must have elements of overriding public interest. Today on the program, we'll look more at the motives, the functions and the expectations from the committee. We talked to a member, Mr. Dikpo Okpeshei, a senior advocate of Nigeria who was called to the bar in 1986. Mr. Okpeshei has experience in diverse areas of the law, from construction to land law, insolvency, aviation, oil and gas, to mention a few. He's a member of the Chartered Institutes of Taxation and the Chartered Institutes of Arbitration. I began my chat with him by asking if the setting up of the 20-man National Prosecution Coordination Committee was some kind of indictment that the prosecution agencies were not doing enough or more of an acknowledgement that there were prosecution gaps in the criminal justice system. I would not say in setting it up he was trying to indict the prosecuting agencies and um, even his ministry. No, I think uh, was not holding brief for him on this, but I want to believe that there is a nexus between prosecution and trial. And that nexus between prosecution and trial has its foundation in investigation. So what this committee is trying to do is to make sure that the prosecutors and investigators coordinate early before going to court. Because if the investigation is not good enough, Obviously, you are going to have a, a poor result, and there will be no point going to court if there is no, if you don't have a good uh, investigation. So, what he has done really is to strengthen the system for effective and result-oriented prosecution, so that we don't waste time on frivolous applications or prosecutions and so on. And you also agree with me that there has been so much talk about the judiciary being the problem. I believe also in his wisdom, the Honorable Attorney General has seen that if the investigation is faulty, the prosecution might not likely deliver the goods. And the duty of the judge is to uh, resolve every doubt in favor of the accused person. So something that appears to be obvious, that a crime had been committed, the person is let loose because the judge also has a constitutional mandate. In fact, he has taken oath. Of, of office. So he will resolve any doubt in favor of the accused persons. So if these are issues that are within the public domain already, and I think we must commend the Honorable Attorney General for setting up this committee, one, to allow for prosecutors and investigators to interface early, and two, to ensure that proper matters are the ones taken to court, so that by the time you get to court, both the prosecution and the, and the investigators, they are on one page. It will be very easy and it will be faster to face trials. And I think that is one of the major reasons which is trying to resolve. Okay. But not an indictment, but rather to strengthen the system. Now that the AGF has asked for the collation of all pending cases and for the advice of the committee on some of these cases, what other role will the committee play? The role for the coordination committee now is one, what, they, what is being collated is result of investigation. The prosecuting, uh, the, uh, the committee now is to look at the level of investigation. If they agree with it, then they would prefer charges and assign the cases to teams that had been set up by the Honorable Attorney General. There are teams of prosecutors, both between the official, uh, official bar and the unofficial bar. So this are made up so as to build uh, to build a capacity. So once they look at the evidence and they believe it's not good enough, they take it back to the investigators. And don't forget that 
since we started, prosecutors have been trained, investigators have been trained, and it's for this purpose that they were made to go through specific trainings. Not that they didn't have trainings, even those from from the uh, I mean uh, from the private law practice, they have their trainings. But to let them buy into the approach of governance, they have been trained now and they know what exactly they are supposed to do. So once these cases are collated, we look at them. Not all the cases, there are so many. But we look at them and then try to analyze the evidence that is before that they have already put in place. If we feel there is a loophole, then we send it back for further investigation. And this will take care of the problem of uh, prosecutors who draft long charges and then subsequently ask for amendments. In drafting charges, there are so many things you look at. And at times, based on the evidence available, you could be in court and something new happens. So one cannot rule out amending charges as we go along. But the incidents will be drastically reduced. We cannot rule out amending charges as we go along, but the incident will be drastically reduced. In fact, part of the, uh, the, the mandate is to ensure that the coordinating committee complies with the uh, Administrative Criminal Justice Act to the letter. And you know one of the major principles of that is to make sure that cases are heard on day-to-day -day basis. So all of that had been put before the coordinating committee to ensure that speedy trial is, uh, is the order of the day. Now I imagine that all of this will fast track the prosecution of criminal cases because the president did say at the workshop for the leadership of the bench that judges allow defense counsel to get away with delaying trial. Now if the AGF and the committee strengthens prosecution, what about defense counsel delaying trial and the judges who seemingly let them get away with it? I believe it's a function of so many things. If the case, if the prosecution is ready to go on, the, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act allows for a certain number of adjournments. Then it's for the prosecutor to put his feet down. You see, if the defense de demands for a particular thing and the prosecution agrees, the judge is not going to do anything from the blues. He's going to walk along with them. But now that all the prosecutors and investigators have been trained and enlightened on what to do, there is even a guideline for prosecution now that has been approved by the Honorable Attorney General. There is a guideline which they must follow because we ask is to also monitor the prosecutors, not just to leave everybody at large, to monitor. So once you uh, derogate from that uh, uh, code of conduct, so to say, then there is an issue. There is an issue. So if this is followed to the letter, the law is the law. The judge will, where there is a specific provision of the law, the, the, the judge will have little or no discretion to exercise. So it is now the prosecutors know now that they must follow the Administration of Criminal Justice Act to the letter. And I don't believe the judges, the judges are lawyers, don't, you know, and I believe um, if you want to talk of hardworking people, I think we have quite a number of judges who are working tirelessly to ensure that uh, we have a sane society. So I believe everybody would uh, take a cue. Is the major lacuna is between investigation and prosecution, where there is no synergy, where you have a matter, you are going on with a matter, prosecuting the matter, your witness, who is um, maybe an invest investigating police officer, is suddenly transferred from uh, Lagos to Maiduguri, and then you are trying to get him to come back to Lagos. He needs to go through seven layers and layers of approval for him to come. He comes, maybe on that day the court cannot sit or something. He has to go back to Maiduguri. You know, all of that are issues that we believe are uh, can can warm delaying the you know, uh, speedy prosecution of uh, cases in Nigeria. But all that training has been put in place now.